Imagine receiving a late night call that changes your life forever. A loved one has been rushed to the hospital. In an instant, your world is turned upside down, filled with uncertainty, fear, and an overwhelming sense of helplessness. Dealing with a sudden health crisis of a loved one is one of the most challenging experiences anyone can face. The emotional impact can be devastating, leaving family members and caregivers feeling isolated and overwhelmed. Without further ado, let's dive into the crucial steps and strategies for managing a loved one's sudden health crisis. Discovering a loved one in distress is a heart-stopping moment that can leave you feeling paralyzed with fear. Picture this, you walk into your mother's house saying a cheerful hello, but there's no response. You search the rooms frantically until you find her on the floor, unable to move, mumbling incoherently. The initial shock is overwhelming, but taking immediate and decisive action is crucial. First and foremost, call 911 without delay. Time is of the essence in medical emergencies, especially with conditions like strokes, where every second counts. Clearly and calmly, provide the dispatcher with all necessary information. Your location, the nature of the emergency, and your mother's current condition. Stay with your loved one while waiting for the emergency responders to arrive. Hold her hand, speak to her softly, and provide as much comfort and reassurance as possible. Let her know that help is coming and that she's not alone. Your presence can be calming and may help keep her as stable as possible until professional help arrives. Remaining calm and collected during these moments is vital for your loved one and effectively communicating with the emergency services. Take deep breaths to steady yourself. Panic can cloud your judgment and delay critical actions. By keeping a level head, you can ensure that you provide the best possible care and support in those critical initial moments. Taking these immediate steps can significantly affect the outcome of the crisis. It's a harrowing experience, but knowing how to respond can empower you to handle the situation with confidence and composure. When you arrive at the hospital, it can feel like you've stepped into a whirlwind. First, expect a flurry of initial assessments and tests. The doctors will likely start with a brain scan to determine the extent of the stroke, along with other tests to check for injuries or additional complications. It's a lot to take in all at once, especially when you're already overwhelmed by the situation. Receiving a serious diagnosis is incredibly tough. When the doctor tells you it's a stroke and maybe even pneumonia, it feels like the floor drops out from under you. Your mind races with worry and a thousand questions. This is where it's crucial to stay as composed as possible, even though it's incredibly difficult. One of the best things you can do is communicate clearly with healthcare professionals. Don't be afraid to ask questions, lots of them. Write down what they say or have someone with you to help take notes. This way, you can review the information later when less stressed. Ask about the treatment plan, what each medication is for, and the next steps. Make sure you understand everything. If something isn't clear, ask for clarification. Also, establish a point of contact with the medical team, a nurse or a doctor who can provide updates and answer any follow-up questions. This can help you feel more in control and informed about your loved one's care. Navigating the hospital experience is daunting, but staying informed and involved can make a big difference in managing the situation and ensuring your loved one receives the best possible care. Feeling guilty and helpless after a loved one's health crisis is incredibly common. Trust me, it's something most people go through. You might think, I should have gone over sooner, or if only I had noticed the signs earlier. These thoughts can weigh heavily on you, making a challenging situation harder. First, it's important to recognize that these feelings, while normal, are often misplaced. Hindsight is always 2020, and it's easy to beat yourself up over what you could have done differently. But remember, you did the best you could with the information and resources you had at the time. No one can predict these things. Blaming yourself won't change what happened. 
To cope with these emotions, consider talking to a counselor or therapist. They can provide you with tools to manage your feelings and help you navigate through this challenging time. Sometimes, just having a neutral person to talk to can make a world of difference. Also, don't underestimate the power of sharing your feelings with supportive friends or family. They care about you and can offer comfort and perspective you might not see alone. You don't have to go through this alone. Another great option is joining support groups for caregivers. Being with others who understand exactly what you're going through can be incredibly validating and comforting. They can share their experiences and coping strategies, which can help you feel less isolated and more empowered. Keep in mind, it's okay to feel these emotions. What's important is finding healthy ways to process and manage them, so you can be there for your loved one and take care of yourself too. After the initial hospital stay, the next big step is transitioning your loved one either back home or to a care facility. This transition can feel overwhelming, but you can make it smoother with some planning. Developing a care plan is crucial. This plan should outline the day-to-day -day care your loved one will need, including medications, physical therapy, and any special routines. It's a way to ensure nothing is overlooked and everyone involved knows what to do. Professional caregiving services can be a huge help. Whether it's home health aides coming in to assist with daily tasks or more specialized medical care, these professionals can provide the support that might be difficult for you to manage on your own. Don't hesitate to look into these services. They can make a big difference in your loved one's quality of life and your peace of mind. Hospice care plays a vital role for those dealing with terminal conditions. Hospice isn't just about end-of-life care. It's about providing comfort and support, managing pain, and helping your loved one live as fully as possible in their remaining time. It also offers emotional and practical support for the family. Maintaining a support network is essential. To share the load, involve other family members in caregiving tasks. Even if they can't be there physically, they can help with things like scheduling, grocery shopping, or simply offering emotional support. This shared responsibility can make you feel less alone and more supported. Utilize community resources and services too. Many communities have programs specifically designed to support caregivers and older people, such as meal delivery, transportation services, and respite care. These resources can provide much needed relief and support. Building a strong support network and using available resources can help you manage the demands of long-term care more effectively. Taking care of yourself is as important as caring for your loved one, even though it might not always feel that way. Being a caregiver is incredibly demanding, both physically and emotionally, and it's easy to forget about your own needs. But remember, you can't pour from an empty cup. If you're not taking care of yourself, you won't be able to care for anyone else effectively. First, talk about the basics, regular exercise, healthy eating, and getting enough sleep. These might sound cliches, but they're essential for maintaining your health and energy levels. Try incorporating physical activity into your daily routine, even if it's just a short walk. Eating balanced meals can help keep your energy up, and getting enough sleep is crucial for your mental and physical well-being. It's also important to take breaks and ask for help when needed. Don't try to do everything on your own. Reach out to family members, friends, or professional caregivers to share the load. Taking even a short break can help you recharge and prevent burnout. Another key part of self-care is engaging in hobbies and activities that bring joy and relaxation. Whether reading, gardening, painting, or anything else you love, make time for these activities. They can provide a much needed mental escape and help you maintain a sense of normalcy. By the way, taking care of yourself isn't selfish, it's necessary. By prioritizing your well-being, you're ensuring you can continue to be there for your loved one, providing the best care possible. So take that walk, ask for help, and don't feel guilty about spending time on what you enjoy. 
You deserve it. Some real positives come from caregiving, even though seeing them during tough times can be hard. For one, you often build a much closer relationship with your loved one. You learn so much about them and yourself. Those little moments of laughter, the shared stories, and even the silent time spent together can create a profound sense of connection. Caregiving also brings a unique opportunity for personal growth. You discover strengths and abilities you never realized you had. You become more patient, compassionate, and resilient. These experiences, as challenging as they are, can shape you into a stronger person. It's important to focus on the positive impact you're making. Your dedication and love provide comfort and support to someone who needs it. Every small act of care makes a difference. So, whenever you feel overwhelmed, remember the good you're doing. You're giving your loved one the best care possible, and that's something to be proud of. To wrap up, we've covered the shock of discovering a loved one in crisis, navigating the hospital experience, coping with guilt, transitioning to long-term care, and the importance of self-care. Also, seeking support and looking after yourself is crucial. You're doing an incredible job, and it's okay to ask for help. Stay strong and focus on the positive impact you're making. Please share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Let's support each other through this journey.